okay so in this video we will be evaluating the dimension and basis of the solution of this set of equations okay so what does that basically mean like that means that what are the solutions of these set of equations the system of linear equations it is the values of variables that satisfy all these equations right now the first thing that we want to do away with is that all these three are individual equations like oh, none of them is a linear combination of one or the other right so how do we do that how do we conclude that okay these are independent or one of them is not independent like it is just a linear combination it is just some other equation or a combination of the remaining two well we form this matrix of coefficients and we reduce it to the row uh, the eclan form okay so let's do it mm, yeah our row 2 will change to row 2 minus twice row 1 and then row 3 will change to row 3 minus 5 times row 1 right so we are making no changes to the first row so I'll write it as such then r2 minus 2 times r1 2 minus 2 is 0 6 minus 6 is 0 5 minus 4 is 1 1 plus 2 is 3 and minus 1 plus 2 hmm, minus 1 plus 2 is 1 now this 5 minus 5 is 0 15 minus 15 is also 0 12 minus 10 is 2 1 plus 5 is 6 and negative 3 positive 5 2 okay so I hope this is correct and yeah seems fine okay now it's evident this row if we multiply the entire row by 2 we'll get this row right so actually one row one equation of the three given equations is actually a linear combination some some linear combination of the other two okay so we just have to deal with two equations basically right now the next operation should be r3 will change to r3 minus 2 times r2 okay and this will just shine okay what this will do is to keep no yeah so okay nothing anyway i was trying to do something it will just change this to zero right let's save you precious time okay so this was this is what you'll get now the thing to observe here is that pivots this is a pivot then in the next row the first element is this first non-zero element okay and then in the next row well that entire row is zero so these are our variables right 
and this was x1, x2, x3, x4, x5. Not actually, uh, yeah, uh, they represent, they are not actually this. Like we know that this is how it is actually happening, x4 and x5. This is how the multiplication is taking place, right? So when we multiply our row with our column, look how like this entire row multiplied by this entire column. So it is evident that this one will go with x1, 3 will go with x2, 2 will go with x3, this will go with x4, with x5, okay? So that is why I wrote this thing, okay? This, that is why I wrote it. It is not technically right, but just to explain, okay? Yeah. So let's get this out of the way. All right. And let's continue. Hmm. So what this gives us is that this x1 and x3, they are called the pivots, pivot entries, okay? And x2, x4, and x5, these are the free variables. Free variables, okay? What does this mean? Uh, let me explain it with an, another example. Say if we had a three cross three matrix, okay? Three cross three matrix, and we had three independent rows, okay? None of them was a linear combination, okay? So none of the rows was zero. In such a case, what would have happened? None, all three of them would have been a pivot, x1, x2, x3, okay? And none of them would have been free. That means if none of them is free, it implies that there is only one value corresponding to every variable that satisfies all the three equations. One value of each, which, were, which we also call as trivial solution. Okay? But when do we get more than one solution? We get it when, say, this row was zero, that would set x3 as a free variable. That means x3 will take any value it desires. And corresponding to that, we will get the values of x2 and x1. That is the notion of a free variable. And the pivots, they are dependent on free variables. Okay, that is why they are called the pivots. Okay, pivot, not the technical term pivot. Just, I don't know the origin of this name, but you get the idea, right? So, let's, exp let's understand this with the example we are doing. Okay, now, see, x2, x4, x5 are free to take any values, okay? So, first thing, these three will decide the solution set, not these two, okay? So this implies that the dimension of the solution set is like that. Mm -hmm. Solution set is generally called W, referred to as W. What am I doing? So dimension of W will be three in this case, okay? Because we have three variables, three free variables, okay? They will decide the solution. These two won't decide the solution because they are pivots, not free, okay? So this is the dimension 
another thing I want to clear right now is the rank of this matrix. Mm, that is two, like the number of pivot entries is the rank. Okay, because only non-zero rows, okay, only non-zero rows will have pivot entries, okay. Okay, now let's get back to this. So dimension is W. Now the next thing to find out is the basis. So basis is what combination of these three variables should be used. Okay. Now how do we find the basis? We take individual like first thing we'll do is we'll, we'll write these equations these two okay let's write it what we're getting from the first one is x1 plus 3 times x2 plus 2 times x3 minus x4 minus x5 is 0 and the second equation is like x3 minus sorry plus 3 times x4 plus x5 is 0 okay so now our basis okay what what happens while finding basis is that these three are the weight which one which ones were free mm, x2 x4 and x5 x2 x4 and x5 are free so what i'll do is I'll set this as 1 and the remaining 2 as 0, then second one as 1 and the remaining 2 as 0 and you get the idea. These 2 as 0 and this as 1. Okay. So yeah, let's do that. Okay, no, not case 1. The first, first basis will be when x2 is 1 and x4 equals x5 equals 0. Okay, let me name this as equation 1 and this as 2. When we put this in the equation 2, we get x3 as 0, right? Because x4 and x5 both are 0. And when we put them in equation 1, uh, we'll get x1 as, now see, this term, this term, and this term is 0, and x2 is 1, so x1 will be minus 3. Okay, pretty basic, right? Very simple calculation. Now, this is our first basis, and a neat way to do this is, hmm, We write x2, then we make a column vector, and x2, second position is 1, x4 is 0, x5 is 0, x3 came out to be 0, x1 came out to be negative 3. Okay, then we'll write the second free variable which is x4, we'll write the column vector, and at the fourth place, we'll write 1, right? Then x5 will be 0, x2 will be 0, okay? Now, x4 is 1. So when we put this in second equation, x4 as 1, we'll get x3 plus 3 equals 0, which will give us x3 as negative 3, right? pretty standard right no big deal and next we'll do is we'll put all these four values in the first equation so what we'll get is x1 as it is everything will go on that side of the equality and x2 is 0 like this term is 0 and this term is 0 x4 
minus 2 times x3 which is x4 is 1 minus 2 times negative 3 which is 7 so this position we get 7 right I am doing this because it is a neat way and I was confused when I first came across this at how they are doing this. So I thought I will explain it. x5 now will set x5 as 1 and remaining two free variables as 0. Remember we do not have to touch the pivots. pivots their values will depend on the free variables, the value of free variables. Like in this case, when we put these values in the second equation, x3 will be x4 is 0, so plus 0 plus x5 is 1, so x3 will be negative 1, right? And x4, sorry, x1 we'll put these four values now in the first equation so what's zero x2 is zero and x4 is zero right then x3 is negative one and x5 is one so x1 will be mm, two plus one if I'm not wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it will be 3, right? Hmm. Okay, so yeah, that is how we find the basis. And so the basis of this solution set is these three these three entities that we got this one this one and this one okay so the basis is three because the dimension is three dimension and basis will be equal right now if you're confused what this actually is then i think it will take a little more time but just expand it minus three x2 this was just for reference. It will be something like U, V, and W here. Okay? Yeah. I'm glad I continued this. Okay? So, yeah, this is how we find the dimension and basis. Okay? So, you can write a like subscript or something here to remind you what the free variable is. But this thing just represents that this place is 1, this free variable is 1, this free variable is 1, this free variable is 1. Otherwise, it is uh, another vector which will come from the, like this will be the basis and this will be the coefficient matrix. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Any doubts, ask me in the comments.